20 years ago, if you wanted to make a phone call and you wanted to call someplace else in the world, it was complicated. Right now, you can pick up your phone, you can immediately call anywhere in the world. It's totally frictionless. You don't even think about it anymore. When you send money across the world, it's not like that. And it's not like that yet through Currency Cloud. It's not like that through any of our competitors. It's still more complicated than it needs to be. And it needs to be simpler. And we're part of the movement to make that simpler. Uh, there's a whole series of new digital businesses. I mean, we all know about Airbnb and, um, and Uber. We hear about those. Um, but there's, there's lots of different, different business in digital business models. Um, freelancers being paid in marketplaces. Um, all sorts of things being paid in e-commerce. Um, sort of a reorganization of commerce and business um, driven by the internet and driven by business models. Um, that's very, very different. You know, where, where your business is, where your employees are, where your customers are, where your suppliers are, all of that has become massively global over the last 10 years. Okay, all right. So we established Currency Cloud because we felt there was uh, an opportunity to improve the way international payments are made. Um, we think that the environment, and still is actually to an extent, we, we, we felt that the international payments environment was fraught with unnecessary cost, complexity, um, and there was a, a fundamental lack of transparency in the costs associated with moving money from one point to another, especially when it crosses a border. When um, you send money um, via a bank to pay a bill somewhere, it's costing you typically one to two percent. And, and as a customer, you've got very little um, control over those rates, very little understanding of those rates. And it's really hard to track because exchange rates move all the time. So how do you know what the true exchange rate is? It's very difficult to, um, to understand what's going on. So it's a whole area around price transparency and that really enables um, financial service providers to charge over the odds for the service that they're delivering. So we established a business to set about writing what we thought were those wrongs. So I, th I think fintech is a really recent phenomenon. Um, you know, really we started the, the boom started in about 2012. It's about five years old now, um, and there were some early examples of it. PayPal is a great early example of it, for example. But in terms of really gathering pace, it was a recent phenomenon. So for me, if I go back to firstly why why is fintech boom? So go back, regulation changed, doors opened some years back, and there was this really lovely opportunity of, of trusted banks who are naturally quite conservative and careful how they innovate. And then you have technology companies who are highly innovative and whose models are often funded on that basis in terms of new ideas, new ways of doing things. You know, as we bring prices down and increase automation, what you'll see is banks will have to respond. So I think the goal for us is to build a very, very large company. Um, that sort of helps the world of digital commerce become global. Um, I think one of the fallouts from that, from ourselves and everybody else, is forcing banks to actually do a better service. What challenges? I, I think I think that the challenges that, that that we face are typical challenges of any any fintech, any startup type of company. I mean, there is a challenge for the the fight and the retention for good talent. At the end of the day, what we do, what we are, boils down to the people that we have, to the people that want to work with us. That translates into a war for talent. Getting the right amount of people with the right skill set is very, very difficult. So we need to compete, we need to make sure that we remain fresh, that we remain an attractive and interesting company so that the, the potential employees, when they need to make a decision between do I want to go to a big bank or do I want to go to a very cool new startup, they decide to come with us. So that's one. So is this what I predicted nine years ago? I, I thought I might be retired now. You know, you, you, when you set up a business, you have these you know, delusions of grandeur that you're going to be lying on a beach in five years' time after selling your, your business for a billion dollars. Um, that's not to say I'm not enjoying what I'm doing. Um, and actually, it's, whilst that is 5% of the reality, is actually this is quite tough. And there's a good stat in terms of the number of um, 
fintech startups that have been funded since 2002, I think it is, there's like 1% have actually made it to kind of a $100 million valuation. Um, so there's a, a lot of startups coming through, but only a, a few are successful. So you know, we're really proud of what we've done. Um, and we're actually really proud of, and I'm really excited by some of our customers. I think I said before, we like to think of ourselves as intelligent, but actually our clients are the really intelligent ones. Um, and prior to me moving to the US, I used to look after our kind of global client base of customers. So I had a lot of FaceTime with these guys. And they're really smart. They're really, really interesting. They're at the front end. In terms of the payments industry in general, I, um, I think it's one of those industries that's going to continue to grow and continue to expand. The world is increasingly small. Um, global expansion isn't going away. Despite the rise of populism, globalism is, is going to continue to be a thing. And there will always be a requirement to move money across a border, whether it be to conduct international business payments or whether it be the the ever-increasing diaspora and the rise of migrants sending money home. There will always be money moving around the world. It's, it's one of the fundamental building blocks of the global economy, the, the movement, the global movement of money and the mobility of goods and services and people. Um, that's not going to change. That's not going to change. It's only going to become more relevant.